So I would mentioned in uh, the first video also that uh, these oversight officials and the hospitals are profiting from these frauds in a number of ways. And one of the ways that they can profit from not treating you, uh, not treating the underlying cause of your, Ill, your medical disability that's crippling you or making it unable for you to work so that you lose your house, you lose your car, you lose everything, they end up, they can... Uh, let's say you have insurance, or even if you don't have insurance. I know in Georgia they can put a lien on your property. They can take your property from you. They can force you to sell your house to pay those ridiculous medical bills. Um, they can profit by once the bank forecloses on your property, for whatever reason, they scoop in, buy the property up, flip it, and they make a fortune. Um... The HUD fraud that results when they get you fraudulently qualified for HUD using those falsified medical records, they have to build the uh, low-income housing and they invest in those real estate deals. I think that's what was going on with Byron Brown. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go more into that later. Right now I'm just doing an overview about, about my whistleblower claims against both major parties, but the actual lawsuit that I filed, the sealed Quaitan whistleblower lawsuit that I filed in the Western District of New York was specifically against the DNC because there weren't any Republicans directly involved in what happened to me that prompted me to file the lawsuit. The only people involved were Letitia James, Byron Brown, and Cuomo. And Cuomo is the state DNC chair. Byron Brown is his... is his... Second, second, he, Byron Brown is the, um, I don't remember what they called it in the newspaper, but basically when Cuomo's gone, Byron Brown is the DNC chair. It takes over for Cuomo as the DNC chair in the state of New York. Now, Letitia James was endorsed by Cuomo, and that attorney that my lawyer had to run off the property mention both Letitia James and Val Demings, and they're all part of the Clinton camp, just like uh, Jay Nixon and Chris Coster. And I believe the bulk of the liability, even though it is suspect and very likely that Orlando Regional Medical Center and Florida Hospital knew I had pelvic cancer while I was living with Chad Cronin as a sworn and immunized investigator, which that doesn't go away. He, he, I made sure I recorded him telling me when I finally left him for my safety to get out from underneath this violence, he said, you remember, I swore you in and immunized you, so nothing you say, the police can't use it. So a lot of that swearing me in and immunizing me, it was to protect his client, so I couldn't testify as the, the prosecutors couldn't have me testify as clients, but he thought he was protecting himself from criminal, uh, from a criminal investigation as well, which the police are refusing to do any type of investigation because he's a fucking cop. They're not going to have their bias, they're not going to help put their bias crimes advisor in prison for bias crimes that involved their police, former police chief, and probably all their police chiefs, but especially Val Demings, and the governor, and show that the, that the Democrats and Republicans are working together to screw everybody and commit Brady violations, and especially in Florida, prisons are a cottage industry. There's 68 counties, and there's a major prison in every single county. Um... When Chad launched this investigation, it was into health care fraud. It was into Brady violations and health care fraud that included false criminal allegations in the medical records. And basically, all of these statements that I'm going to post, and there's going to be a lot of them, because this was a seven-year, this investigation started in 2013. But the actual crimes, fraud schemes, developed long before that. I mean, he was actually investigating frauds that happened years prior to that. And what we've discovered is that they've been ongoing for almost 20 years. And it really flourished under Bush, but it's very important to recognize that Bush's 10th cousin, Barack Obama, 
and the Catholic Health CEOs, I believe it was Kevin Porter, I know Lloyd Dean is the CEO of Dignity, which is now Common Spirit Health, and the other CEO was Kevin something or another, but Lloyd Dean helped write the Affordable Care Act. And this is significant because in the Affordable Care Act, they put in a criminal clause where if you don't buy the crappy insurance by United or Canteen or whoever, you get sanctioned by the IRS. You get penalized for not buying insurance that is no good. These insurance companies are profiting from this fraud too because something, I don't know all the specifics, but something about the ACA reimburses those those uh, insurance companies. I don't know how it works. That's something that, that the lawyers and the prosecutors are going to have to look into. But I can tell you that there's a whistleblower in United that went forward in 2000. In 18 and said that they were falsifying medical records to make people look sicker than they are and that's ultimately what's going on in my case and many others there it may be psychiatric but that's still medical if you're saying that the person needs medication that they have an access one diagnosis you're saying that there's something organically wrong with them medically wrong with something in their brain that they need this medication to make it work it's still medical it's just a psych the 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 medical specialty is psychiatry as opposed to orthopedic or whatever so it's still medical if they're claiming psychiatric so basically uh what they're doing is the 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 whistleblower with united said that they were allowing the false these doctors to falsify medical records and make people look sicker than they really are. And he didn't go into too much detail about what the diagnoses were. So somehow these insurance companies are profiting from these Medicare and Medicaid and marketplace frauds just like everybody else. And I have recorded all of my phone calls with United. And when I originally was covered under United, they absolutely understood what I was saying. They said, We're, we need to get a social worker to get you out of Columbia to get you into it. We want to, we're going to throw out the rule book and approve you for out of network care because you've been to the ER 27 times. You're getting sicker and sicker and they're refusing to treat you for cancer. They're refusing to deal with the hemorrhaging, the sepsis. And now you're having heart attacks and we need to get you out of that network. And what we didn't know was that they had all integrated from coast to coast. It didn't matter where I went. I wasn't going to get health care. And uh, including New York. And I thought, well, I need to at least go to a state where they're not going to put up with this kind of crap. And I had lived in New York. And this type of human rights violation uh, is not tolerated there. And there were people, there were people staging protests in New York in front of, in Albany, uh, protesting the falsification of medical records and the, and the wrongful imprisonment of psych patients, wrongfully, uh, committing psych patients. And they were doing it for months at a time. And, uh, there was another protest outside of a nursing home where they actually put a nanny cam in the room and, looked at the abuse and the thing is in small communities like that when you allow when a governor and an attorney general is allowing fraud to go on at one health care system it goes on at all of them because they're all integrated in specifically in buffalo it was Kaleida health catholic health roswell uh erie county medical center which was apparently uh shared a ceo with Kaleida. And uh, that was all you had to choose from. And they pretty much partnered with and, and integrated with all of the healthcare facilities. And, and another reason why they're letting people get addicted to narcotics from the untreated medical conditions is then they profit from kickbacks from the prescription of Suboxone and the referral to Suboxone and methadone clinics. So, again, when I say they're profiting from these scams based on the falsified medical records that are passed around to the homeless shelters are participating, um, social, in, in Buffalo, the social services people were participating. They got me fraudulently qualified for New York Medicaid in the first place. 
Uh, eventually, I recorded United in Buffalo, basically telling me they couldn't see any of my previous records that showed the multiple hospitalizations for sepsis and the abnormal EKGs and the multiple metastasis. A uh, Catholic Health, uh, the uh, the Columbia Police Detective uh, that took me to uh, the ER uh, about four weeks before Chad Cronin is listed as dead, uh, though we don't believe he's actually dead because nobody actually saw a body or went to any funeral service. Um, and when I mentioned that he may be sequestered to Tara Marshall, who was a cross-disability advisory board member for uh, Phoenix PD, she got all nervous. So she's like, what makes you say that? Like, she was like, how did she figure that out so quick? And I'm like, well, it really isn't. There's no cause of death listed. He had all these connections, and there's not one single memorial. There's no news articles about how they found a body, and then they're waiting on the on the results of the autopsy. Nothing. No, none of it adds up. And she got real nervous and changed the subject. So I'm like, okay, that little fucker's sequestered. Because after we staged the Mizzou football player protest, it was my idea. I sent the email. I still have the sent email. I cc'd it to him, the NAACP, and multiple people at Mizzou. They pull it off. They tried to kill me while it was ongoing. It was a Me Too scandal. Chad isn't the only Me Too situation here. I, there's also a Me Too situation with a nurse practitioner at Family Health Center of Boone County, which is the University of Missouri teaching facility. My last primary care provider that I had for a period of time, uh, she got recorded coming in the room trying to hook up with me for an affair. And I believed if Chad was actually dead that he had been murdered, that he, since he had relapsed into addiction, I figured they probably doped him with something and killed him to make it look like a suicide. And there's the Clinton, the Clintons have suicided a lot of people, like, uh, uh, Seth Rich, I think, was shot, but the uh, process server, I can't remember the process server's name, the process server that served the DNC with the lawsuit that had something to do with uh, Seth Rich, excuse me, Seth Rich and Julian Assange, he was found overdosed, and it was like, he didn't use drugs. So, I assumed that Chad was dead, and then as things went on and people kept trying to lure me back to Florida, I was like, okay, I think Chad's still alive, and he's trying to avoid his own uh, workman's comp because he never got me uh, properly covered under work comp. And since him and his father's violence ultimately gave these doctors a blank check to murder me, both in Orlando and elsewhere, it's work comp. So, uh, but anyway, Beth Sweeney got recorded trying to have an affair, and I recorded several people like Katie Huddleston Smith and Annette Ward, Annette Ward from Central Missouri Stop Human Trafficking Coalition, letting me know that I was being refused cancer treatment as domestic violence because Beth was pissed that I would had mentioned her trying to have an affair. Well, she fired me as a patient from Family Health Center, and on staff at Family Health Center was the Missouri Health Net Director, Dr. Joe Parks, appointed by Governor Jay Nixon. So this is not just a sex scandal with Chad. It's a sex scandal with her, too. And it didn't just involve her. An old friend of mine named Darla Munoz Natoloi, who we already had under investigation for her biased crimes, against me that got Matthew Nessel killed at the age of 18. Uh, and MU was being blown up for the sexual misconduct behind Sasha Minu Curry and then them firing her off the swim team and, and forcing her to sign away her scholarship. Um, then Bess Sweeney gets mad and gets me raped uh, with a speculum for three minutes and audio recordings uploaded to my YouTube. And then a, a Catholic health doctor told me and Katie Hillison Smith from Columbia Police Department that he was doing a DNC biopsy in this dead den ablation and deliberately accelerated the cancer. I've been stage four since May of 2015, and I'll pick up later.